Um, hi, Baron. It's really nice hi. to meet you through this virtual world. It's really nice to see you. Hello, Baron. I'm happy to see you. Yes, I can understand some of this. Hello, Baron. Hello, Baron. Okay, uh, so before we start this session, I would like to introduce you to a friend of mine named Ezad. So he will help us in translating our discussion today. So yeah, I'm Karen with my partner Ari. We run a gallery and independent publisher specialized in Indonesian photographic books located in Jakarta, Indonesia. So which are now temporarily closed for almost two months because of the current global pandemic. So yeah, uh, thank you for your time. So I know Baran from Hussein and Hassan that I met during Yangon Photo Festival this year. And like four days ago, I asked Hossein to introduce me to one of the female photographers in Iran. And Hossein gave your contact to me. Uh, Okay, so actually I'm in, why am I insanely curious and excited to get to know more about female photographers and their works because I believe it's critical for us to have a women's visual perspective in this current social, environmental, economical and political climate including in the area of photography, which is a male-dominated industry. Okay, so yeah, please tell me about yourself and the photo projects that you have done or are currently working on. <laughs> All right, so she's been studying um, photography for the past seven years. Um, she's been graduated from the University of Tehran um, with the same major, but she has been taking it seriously since the last three years. And she's using this um, photography to express herself and her emotions. And uh, again, how should we begin? Mm-hmm. Um, پروژه ها همیشه چند سال طول میکشند یعنی محدود به یک کارگاه دانشگاهی نمیشن روشون کار میکنن و تبدیل میشن به دقیقه شخصی از فرمت دانشگاه خارج میشن و تا الان حدودا چهار تا پروژه دارم که با این موضوع کار شد کرن um, I don't know exactly the word the terminology for the um, that type of photography that she says but I think it's the documentary type of photography, which you guys are into. Um, so she says um, she has been involved in this type of doc documentary photography for the um, for a while now, and she's been introduced to it from a workshop that she attended to. And um, since then, she's been uh, interested to develop her interest in it, and um, she's been taking some projects from the school, which involved into 
the personal projects that she continued to um, pursue after the um, university. And um, از دانشگاه خارج شد و بعد خودتون ادامه دادیدش بعدش چی شد؟ این که پروژه ها بیشتر حول محور زندگی اجتماعی انسان ها mm. uh, Oh, so then these projects are mainly on um, the um, social um, aspects of the um, society yeah. uh, و همین دیگه and that was it from her and you can continue with the rest of it okay okay Hassan Hussein uh, we are still discussing about Baron's project <laughs> <laughs> this is my friend Ezad hey okay. guys okay so maybe long, uh, we can still continue to Baran's project. Maybe you want to do a, some presentation of your projects, Baran? First, yeah. Um, did, Karen, what did you say? Uh, I'm going to start my presentation now, I think. Karen, did you say she, she can start now? Yeah, yeah, you can start now. OK, OK, all right. خب من با پورتفولیوم شروع میکنم روی توی پورتفولیو استیتمنت هر مجموعه به صورت انگلیسی قرار گرفته و به اضافه یک تعداد محدود از اکسا که من همزمان شیفت میکنم روی یعنی از پورتفولیو خارج میشیم و اکسای بیشتری از هر مجموعه نشون میدیم اونا رو هم میکنم Okay, so she's going to she's going to um, show a portfolio, but um, later on after each after each category, she will um, show um, some extra photos um, from outside this this portfolio um, that she's showing right now. Wonderful. Okay, um, now you can see my portfolio, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. خب این پروژه The Generation Z Butterfly Parking Kids هست The Generation Z رو نمیدونم چی باید ترجمه کنم با من ولی همون Generation Z همون تو انگلیسی همون Generation Z نه آره به فارسی نمیدونم چی ترجمه شده آره من هم نمیدونم نسل نسل در واقع این باترفلای پارکینگ کیپس اسم مجموعه اقایل بچه های پارکینگ پردانه بود محلی که این بچه ها دور هم جمع می شدن و یکی از پاتوخ های این نسل هستش می خواهیم بخونین استیتمنت رو من توضیح بدم بعدش یا اول من توضیح بدم so, so can this is right now what you're seeing is that it's called the generation Z um, which is the same as English. Um, the whole t text is in English. Um, she asks if you want to read it, she can explain verbally. Um, but the meaning behind the name is that the butterfly parking is the name of that place that these kids would gather around and um, do the stuff that you can see in the picture. So she says, if you want, you can just start reading it yourself or I could explain more about it. Okay, just go ahead. Okay. خب این مجموعه همونطور که گفتم اولین و مهمترین مجموعه من در طول دانشگاه و حتی در طول فعالیت هنری سه سال پیش شروع شد و بعد از سه ماه که کارگاه مستند تموم شد تبدیل به دقیقه شخصی من شد و ادامه پیدا کرد همچنان تقریبا میتونم بگم که همچنان ادامه داره مجموعه و دیگه داره کم کم از فرمت اکس از میدیو اکس خارج میشه و دارم تلاش میکنم که میدیوهای دیگران بهش اضافه بکنم 
Um, so yeah. this has been the most important project for her since the university. Um, she started at the university as a small project, but then it grew bigger and um, she was so excited about it that she continued working on it even after the university. Now she's trying to add other types of media to it. And um, this is still going on, that the project is still open. Um, and Bakish. Uh -huh. در واقع میخواستم ببینم که چرا اینقدر سه نسل اخیر ایران اینقدر با هم تجربه زیستشون متفاوته این بچه ها همشون همونطور که گفتم The Generation Z اواخر قرن 19 میلادی تقریبا چون بگیم یا اوایل 2000 به دنیا آمدن همشون تقریبا از 16 تا 21 سال شیوه زندگی که اینها انتخاب کردن نسبت به شیوه زندگی نسل های پیشینشون متفاوت بوده یعنی نوع دقیقشون نوع لایف استایلشون پوشششون نوع کلامشون نوع حتی تایپی, تایپی که توی چت هاشون استفاده کنند به طور کلی محاوره ای که اینها در روز okay. مرد um sorry so i have to cut it because it's going uh, i might forget some so she says um the reason that she started this project was because um she wanted to see the differences between the last three generations of the um iranian society because the the generation gap has been huge enough to see a really huge difference between the generation the first and the second and the second and the third um, so that they call them Generation Z, and um, the some extra reasons was because um, the previous generation used to live in a different way, in a completely different way than the next one. In she mentioned the, that the um, the newer generation is typing differently is wearing clothes differently is um having a different lifestyle and the, all of that was the motivation behind this project that she started it um نه با این نسل به خصوص را بتونیم بگیم پنج شیست سال از اینها بزرگتر ولی برکی خواستن از مرکسی بکنم مجروب بودم که با این ارتباط بگیرم با دوست بشم وارد جمع هاشون بشم و جوری خودم و دوربینم رو با اینها آداپت بکنم یعنی که یعنی در واقع من رو بپذیرم به عنوان عضوی از خودشون کارکار راحتی Right. So she hasn't um, she, uh, she hasn't been in any direct contact with any of these people that she photographed with in the beginning. But in order to get more photographs, she had to um, sort of um, get into their the, their communities and start being start a friendship with them so that she can take take photos of, of them. Um, so that was a an obstacle that she was facing in the beginning. Um, but is she working? اینطوری شد که من وارد این جمع ها شدم شروع کردم ازشون عکاسی کردم و در حین عکاسی سعی کردم که بفهمم چرا این تفاوت وجود داره بین این سن است. با آدم هایی که توی زمینه جامعه شناسی، انسان شناسی مطالعات حرفه‌ای و تخصصی دارن صحبت کردم و سعی کردم که همزمان یک پروژه عملی رو در کنار یک پروژه تحقیقاتی پیش ببرم چون برام میخواستم که در واقع از طریق عکاسی و مطالعات اجتماعی به سوالات ذهنی پاسخ بدم. So that's how she started to get involved in these types of these groups of youngsters who, who, are, who live in a different lifestyle from their um, previous ones. 
And um, besides the fact that she was taking photographs with her, her main major, which is photography, she wanted to explore other stuff and um, run a side project of um, to answer some of the questions that she has about the social um, differences about these generations. از طریق همین مطالعات و ارتباطاتی که با آدم های متخصص در این زمینه, در این زمینه ها پیدا کردم تقریبا متوجه شدم که شیوه زندگی که این بچه ها در, در پیش گرفتن چیزی نیست که فقط بخواییم اسمش رو بذاریم یکی لایف استایل متفاوت مبحثی که تحت عنوان آنومی ما میشناسیمش توی جامعه شناسی و انسان شناسی خیلی تاثیر مستقیم روی زندگی یعنی روی این نوع از لایف استایل نسل جدید گذاشته اسم این آدمی به انگلیسی من نمیدونم چی میشه آنومی هم آنومی هستش فکر میکنم آنومی هست Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, so, so she says that this is not um, just a different lifestyle that they're living. Uh, there's a important concept in the socialism that is called anomie or anomie, uh, which I'm not familiar with. But um, she says there's a huge um, category of this um, studies around these types of um, problems that is involved in. It's called the anomie. یک لحظه من باز اینو گم کردم آها اوکی و دیگه اگه سوالی دارم بپرسم so if you have any questions just be free to ask um, okay so it's it's interesting project uh, that that you are currently still working on right so yeah uh, I just want to know more about like the hurdles that you face as a female mm-hmm. photographer when you are doing these projects mm-hmm. as you mm-hmm. mentioned uh, but i just want to know more mm-hmm. because it's like it's, uh, it's a different situation like for current generation right in iran mm-hmm. Um, بیشتر جزیات بگید که چه مشکلات دیگه داشتید تو سر رایتون که میخواستین اکس ها رو بگین یا کلا تو زمینه اکاسی که دارین چه مشکلات دیگه دارین از نظری خانم چون سیاتر نسل خانم ها اونجور مشکلات زیادی دارن برای این اکاسی شون نه واقعا حقیقتا دیروز هم که کرم به من گفتش که ما میکنم راجع اکاسی یعنی مشکلات تاکسی زنان صحبت بکنیم من مثلا مواطن کردم حقیقت اینه که من واقعا مشکلی به عنوان یک زن نداشتم توی عکاسی کردن خیلی جاها اتفاقا جنسیت هم باعث شده که راحت تر عکاسی بکنم و خیلی راحت تر بپذیرن من رو به عنوان یک آدم که میشه بهش اعتماد کرد جلوی دوربینش ایستاد پوز گرفت یا پوز نگرفت و خیلی راحت خودشون رو این مقابل دوربین من قرار می دادن. در این پروژه به خصوص بزرگترین مشکلی که من داشتم صرف ارتباط برقرار کردن با این بچه ها بود. یعنی به سبب لایف و تجربه زیسته متفاوتی که داشتیم راحت نبود که این بچه ها به من و دوربین هم عادت بکنن. وگرنه چه پسر بودم و چه دختر یعنی این مشکل ها رو داشتم اگر که چون با این, با این شیوه زندگی من بیگانه بودم و از خلال اکرسی داشتم سعی کردم که با به این ها نزدیک بشم مگر نه جنسیت هم هیچ وقت برام واقعا نه در این پروژه نه در پروژه های بعدی نه تنها مشکل ساز نشد که حالا جلو تر که بریم تو پروژه های بعدی حتی باید شد که کمک یعنی خیلی کمک زیادی به هم کرد که پروژه ها پیش ببرد. Mm. So, Karen, she says, um, the matter of the fact is that she, um, because she's been a female a photograph, female photographer, has helped her a lot with, uh, with the photographies that sh- she's been involved in, the projects that she's been involved in, because the people who has been in the photos have felt um, 
a lot more easier for them to accept a female photographer than a male so that they could freely um, pose in front of a camera and um, be free. Um, so she says, um, specific to this project, um, the only problem that she faced was that um, the lifestyle that she was going to get involved with was a bit strange to her because she hasn't been having that type of lifestyle before. So she was quite inexperienced with that. Therefore, it was a bit difficult to get into those type of communities and groups of youngsters. You know. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'm just curious. Is there any sanction that apply to these youngsters because they have like different appearance uh, from the previous uh, generations? Um, again, I. کدام تحریمی یا کدام قانون سختی بر روی این جوانوی جنریشن زی که از سنک توش گرفتید الان ایران هست یا نه؟ به خاطر شیبه زندگی متفاوتی که دارن نسبت به جنریشن قبلی ببین حقیقت اینه که تیه پروژه من عبایت فکر کردم که بله هست فکر کردم که خیلی زندگی سختی دارن و شاید دارم ولی طی این سه سال متوجه شدم که نه تنها حکومت یا دولت با اینها مخالفتی نداره که حتی همین مبحث آنومی که دارم میگم برش اشاره میکنم دقیقا اشاره میکنه که این شیوه ای که مثل جدید دنبال به پیش گرفته و داره تجربهش میکنه کاملا چیزیه که حکومت و دولت میخواد یعنی نه تنها باهاشون مبارزه نمیکنه بلکه اینها رو حتی به این سمت سوق میده که اینطوری زندگی بکنن و خب این کاملا دلایل سیاسی و احتمالا اجتماعی داره so she used to think that the, these type of people are, are having a difficult time living in Iran because of their lifestyle but apparently the um, government is actually um, not going hard on them and based on the economy the socialism concept that she mentioned before um, that's what the government wants them to be so there is no sanctions or no um, hardships for them to live in that way so she says there's no um we can say that there's absolutely no rule against them. um there are the police who are fighting them for their way of clothing um and the way their fashion is um so but that's on the in her personal opinion that's on the surface that's what you can see on the surface of the matter but um deep down under you would find out that this is actually what the government wants them to be so um on the surface they might you might think that um the government is against them because of the way they dress the, because of the way they're living um but that's not the, the matter if i can summarize like as a female photographer you have like benefit to go to the personal level to the people so you can like more easily to approach them right yep okay so um um بخاطر اینکه خانم بودید خانم مرکز بودید 
براتون راحتر بود که بخواید با مردم در ارتباط باشین و ازشون عکس بگیرید و در یک سطح شس... شسی راحت باشن جلو دو شما که بخواید اکس هاشون بگیرد درسته؟ برای من اینطوری بوده اکس های زن و یا مردی هستن که متونن این اینقدر راحت ارتباط بگیرن و اکاسی بکنن ولی برای من هیچ وقت جنسیت هم مانع را هم نشد خیلی جهاز حتی کمک کرد واقعا به من فهم کنم so that... نداره یعنی خیلی بستگی به این داره که اکاس چقدر بتونه با سوژهش ارتباط بگیره چه مرد باشه و چه زن um... So this was the case for her that her gender was in favor of her, but in some other cases, there are some other people, regardless of their gender, either male or female, they're having a hard time approaching the people who they're taking the photographs of. And um, she says, this is not a matter of gender. Uh, it is more of how skillful the person is to mm. be able to make an easy approach so that they can take photos. این مجموعه رو فعلا توی پورتفولیو تموم می‌کنیم ولی بعد از اینکه پورتفولیو تموم شد عکس‌های بیشتری حتما می‌بینیم ازش. So there is a lot of photos in this one in this project in this portfolio but there are a lot on outside of this too that she will show you. خب پروژه بعدی من باز پروژه بود که در دانشگاه آغاز شد و ادامه پیدا کرد و تمام شد یعنی پروژه نیست که فعلا ادامه دار باشه تمام نشده یعنی هیچ پروژه تمام نمیشه هیچ وقت عکاس تمامش میکنه ولی فعلا یعنی دیگر عکاسی نمیکنه موزه عکس ها تفریحاتی است که جوانان ایرانی در خون در چهارچوب خانه هاشون دارن تفریحاتی مثل نوشیدن الکلی جات رقصیدن بازی بازی های کارت یعنی کارت کارت گیم آی تینک و به طور کلی هر تفریحی که شاید در جوامع دیگر محلی براشون باشه در در سطح خیابان یعنی ما در کشورهای دیگه بار داریم کازینو داریم محل یعنی صرف انجام دادن این کارها جرم تلقی نمیشه اگر حالا در انجام this project that she started in the university but then didn't continue after the university so it's sort of close but um, she says she's not taking photos of this this one anymore um, and basically the theme of the project is the illegal hobbies of the people and mainly it's about the hobbies of the kids in Iran who are having uh, um, the illegal hobbies at home which are il- which are legal in other countries um, for instance um, using dr- um, drugs alcohol um, playing cards card games and other sorts of stuff that she says um, that might not be illegal in other countries that they have um uh, casinos uh, bars um, nightclubs and this project is mainly talking about those stuff All right. okay it's interesting that like mostly young people doing the party at home right yeah that's mm-hmm. right but is there any clubs that are attended by young people that they they're not they're allowed to have party there in clubs میگه که پارکی هست اونجا که بتونن برن به جای خونه برن تو پارک مثلا این پارتی ها داشته باشن؟ نه پارتی در سطح عمومی کشور ممنوعه و حتی پارتی کردن در محیط خانه هم ممنوعه و اگر که پلیس متوجه بشه جرم حساب میشه که من زیر هر عکس جرم هر کدوم از این کارها رو نوشتم یعنی کپشن هر عکس جرم عیان شدن این کارها رو مقدار جرمی که وارد میشه به مجرم رو نوشتم ولی 
there's no such place in there. Um, any of these photos that you see, um, they're considered a crime in Iran and um, have what is at park in a, in a public place or even at home is banned. Therefore, any photo that you see, the caption is the crime that they're committing. So that the name of the crime is um, written in the caption of each photo. Yeah. Um, اتفاقی که افتاد توی این پروژه این بود که um, من نرفتم از آدم های بیگانه عکاسی بکنم. Uh, همه ی اکس که گرفته شده همه جاهایی بوده که همه ی براس مهمونی هایی بوده که من خودم عضوی از اون بودم و تو شرکت میکردم و حین این که پارتی میکردیم خب من عکاسی میکردم برای مثال همین عکسی که میبینین uh, یه اتفاقی که برام افتاد و همین پروژه این بود که گفتم چون توی دانشگاه شروع شد و من بعد اینا رو بیا دیوار دانشگاه می بردم مجبور بودم که صورتها رو کراپ بکنم به خاطر اینکه اینها دوستای منن هم دانشگاه منن و اگه فیسشون دیده می شد باستشون خطرناک بود و ممکن بود که از طرف دانشگاه تو بیخ بشه so, um... All the photos that she's been taking for this project has been the photos, the groups and the parties that she knew. Uh, so the friend circle, the people who she knew, um, therefore, she, for every photo that she took, she had to crop out every face in that photo so that um, she'd keep the people in a secure. So because she had to bring this project to the university and if they knew about these people who were her classmates and friends, they will be in danger. و برای همینه که دارم اشاره میکنم که اینقدر همه چیز سطحیه به خاطر اینکه ما همونقدر که آزادیم که این اکسا رو روی دیوار ببرگیم یعنی اگر که یک چیزی جرمه، جرمه چطور ما میتونیم اینا رو روی دیوار ببرگیم بعدی میتونیم نصف نیمه ببرگیم متوجه میشیم چیم um, so she says, um, the reason that I'm saying that these, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, you can, go ahead. So she says, um, the reason that um, I told you that these stuff are on the surface is because um, we're, we were allowed to take these photos and put them on the walls, but um, like have like without the faces and stuff but how come if it's illegal how come we could we were allowed to take these pictures put them on the wall um so that's the reason that she was saying that it was all on the surface and on the underneath they, it's just all that what they want so uh, uh do you have any on. okay <laughs> so do you have like any projects that you have done besides this these two documentary projects yeah uh, to another uh, do you have project game done? Yeah, شاید مختص ایران باشه یا حالا کشور های مسلمان من خبر ندارم ولی در ایران ما یک آرایشگاه زنانه داریم و یک آرایشگاه مردانه ورود هر یک از جنس مخالف در هر یک از این مکان ها کاملا غیر قانونیه و منجر به پلوب شدن اون موازه میشه اینا رو بگو تا برم قسمت بری okay, so this project has been about the barber shops in Iran and generally the barber shops are split into two categories of male and female which are two completely separate uh, barber shops and the entrance of either of the genders to the other one is completely banned and it could uh, end up with the closure of the store in the barber shop um and that is the reason that she was interested in taking these photos and the Mostly, she took the photos of the male barber shops and put them in this project. Why, why, why only male barber shop? Because the 
به خاطر همین که برام جالب بود که تجربه کنم این حضور ممنوع رو همین که وارد یک فضای کاملا مردانه بشم و پذیرفته بشم به عنوان یک جنس مخالف و بتونم اونجا بچرخم اکاسی بکنم و این دلیلیه که سلف پورتر رو گرفتم توی همه اکسا حضوری از ردی از من وجود داره بیشتر صرف همین که اینجا, اینجا دقیقا که از همون پروژه هایی که جنسیت من باعث شد که یه پروژه پیش بره و من در واقع از جنسیت هم یک جور استفاده مثبت کردم برای که به تامی پروژه پیش ببرم خیلی جاها هم و برخلاف تصور هم کاملا اجازه می دادم که من برم اکاسی کنم و بیام بیرم so, um... It was mainly because she wanted to be free to go inside and be accepted and to take photos. And the reason, and also to feel the atmosphere of a male dominant place, which is the male bar- barbershop. And um, as you can see in any of these photos, there's a portrait of her in in any of these photos that she is trying to show that um, a female in all the male barbershops. Um, she also mentioned that the this also helped her to um, progress this project because of that, because of her gender actually, because she was a female going in all these male barbershops and taking all these photos, specifically this one that, sh- that she's showing, uh, which is all male, um, except her in the middle, I'm um, taking the photo. Yeah. yeah. So you, you said that uh, women are not allowed to enter the male barbershop, right? So what was the reaction of the people inside the barbershop when you entered? Median ke aksul amal kasay ke tu un barbershop budan nesbat be shuma mirafin dakhil chi bude chi juri bude. Um. Aksul amal da hiç vakh man fina. ولی حقیقت اینه که این بر وقتی دارم میگم که از جنسیت هم استفاده مثبت میکنن اینه که بله من وقتی بارده یک فضای کاملا مردانه میشم بالاخره هیزی مردست خوش هیزی قرارم یعنی چشم چرانی اتفاق میفته و خب چه, اتفا... چه اشکالی داره من هم یک چشم چرانم دیگه من هم با دوربینم و با نگاه متفاوت هم به خاطر جنسیت هم وارد یک حریم مرزه شدم و انگاه دو تا چشم کردم در مقابل هم قرار گرفتم و خب چشم کاری داره سمرش حقیقتا نیزی رو نمیدونم به انگلیسی چه رو بگم گیز آید واجه انگلیسی رو نمیدونم چیه گیز گیز نه اون فرق داره این تیزی یه جور دیگه است چون تیزی رو منظور نگاه میکنن یعنی چیز نیست یه نگاه ساده میشه so she says um, she hasn't had any negative um, reaction of any of those males who were in the male blogger shops um, but um, this is a word that I don't know how to explain in English. Um, it is mainly used in Farsi. And it's when a person is looking at the other gender in a sexual way. So in a, like when you're um, attracted to her or to him and you she's sort of checking top to bottom, you know what I'm saying, Karen? Oh, like male geese? Yeah, exactly. She said it, but I didn't know it. Um, so she says there are these types of stuff happening all the time, but um, that's the same with me because I have my camera looking at them and doing the same thing and taking the photos. <laughs> So she's been um, using her gender in a positive way to um, 
sort of balance that that sorts of um, interactions with other males in that barbershop. Okay. And the last thing, I guess so. I did a project happening during. Do you have any questions about the last project? Uh, no, yeah. For me, it's quite fascinating projects that uh, you as um, as a woman try to enter up to know more about like male world through this barber shop, and and yeah, it's like you're trying to uh, get the the attentions being you're in the middle of this picture. Yeah. Sami did? Are you saying that you had a lot of attention to yourself when you had a lot of attention to yourself? No. 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 حقیقت اینه که کادر بهتری میشست ولی نه اینکه خودم رو از قصد وسط بذارم دلیل خیلی مشخصی نداشتم so there wasn't any um, intention there wasn't any purpose behind putting herself into every portrait in every photo but the reason that you're saying the um the thing that you said about uh, getting the attention she said that was a good point that i haven't thought about it before yeah because so you have like a uh, same composition in every pictures that you took mm -hmm. for this project cool mm -hmm. okay yeah. go on okay. baran okay the last project um خیلی ترجمه‌اش هم واقعا عجیب غریب شد ولی اسمش هست دریاچه شهرای خلیج فارس به پرشن گلف اینجا موضوعی که من عکاسی کردم ساعت عوا... یعنی ساعت نزدیک به بامداد شاید یا اواخر روز از ساعت 11 شب تا یک بامداد شروع کردم عکاسی کردن از آدم هایی که میان کنار یک دریاچه مصنوعی که چند ساله که در تهران ساخته شده و پیکنیک میکنن چیزی که توی استیتمنت هم بهش اشاره کردم اینه که پیکنیک یکی از تفریح های آدم هاست آدم ها دور هم جمع میشن و پیکنیک میکنن توی ایران هم این قاعده مستثنا نبوده یعنی نه تنها مستثنا نبوده که حتی یک آداب تفریحی شاید بشه گفتش که آدم ها عادت دارن که پیکنیک بکنن ولی بزه یه دقیقی من این تنجه شو بگم بخواه So um, she says that this project which has a um, long um, title The Lake of Martyrs of the Persian Gulf um, had a different approach because she has she has started taking photos of the people who were going for picnic at 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. That's the time that she's starting to take photos from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. And um, it was mainly uh, of those people who were going there for picnic on a lake that was made by people in Tehran, which is the capital of Iran. And um, she mentions about the picnic in her project that is a uh, a general hobby of the people in Iran that they would go beside a lake or a beach and they would have a they would sit and would eat something. Um picnic she got to the mission mission and unjet chicken picnic and ساعتشون رو اینطوری وقتشون رو اینطوری کار میکنن در مقابل یک منظره ای اصولا فضای سبز و خب این دریاچه خیلی این امکانو بهشون میده so they spend their leisure time um, sitting yeah. in front of a green scenery and doing the stuff they've seen they're doing in the picture for example taking some puffs of a shia or playing some cards or just looking at the scenery So is it a common thing that like 
many people doing picnic uh, in, mid, in late midnight? Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 گفتم نه تنها یک عادت اجتماعی یعنی ما ایرانی ها پیکنیک برامون اگر با خ... چی میگن آقشت است به خونمون ما همیشه پیکنیک میکنیم ساعت مشخصی هم نداره میتونه از صبح باشه تا آخر شب و خیلی چیز محدودی از دار نیست باقی من فقط تیکه تیکه میگم که راحت‌تر باشه کل چیزایی که میگه رو بهش میرسونم. this is a social norm for people in Iran to do picnic um, it is mixed with their blood and um, there is no specific time for doing this it could be from morning all the way to the night and um, this is a normal habit of people. در, در, در خصوص این جای به خصوص علتی این که من ساعت پایانی شب رو انتخاب کردم به خاطر این بود که خودم چون کار میکنم یعنی اون موقع که اکاسی کردم کار میکردم و تنها زمانی که داشتم این بود که نیمه شب یعنی اواخر شب برم اونجا و اکاسی بکنم ولی باز دوباره اینو انتخاب که این مجموعه رو انتخاب کردم نشون بدم به خاطر اینکه این ساعت یعنی ساعت 11 تا یک شب اصولا ساعت امنی برای رفت آمده یک دختر نیست مخصوصا در جای خلوتی مثلا مثل در چیت کرد ولی باز دوباره همون اتفاق افتاد که توی مجموعه آرایشگاه ها اتفاق افتاده بود یعنی من دوچار چشم شدنی می شدم و ازش استفاده می کردم و عکاسی می کردم نیم در چرم تمام اندازی شدم من دورم so, um... There hasn't been, there, so the reason that she started taking photos of people at 11 o'clock was because she's been working during the day. Therefore, the 11 o'clock was a um, better time for her to go out and take photos. And um, what she says, the, the fact that she was a female going outside at this time wasn't a safe idea for her to do. Um, there has been a lot of interactions with the male people, just like the um, barbershop experience. Um, and she's been using that to um, sort of take more pictures of them and then making them feel more free to in front of her camera. Okay. It's interesting because like uh, during the late midnight, the park's still open because in Jakarta, like there are several places that are closed after like 9 or 10 p.m. خب اینجا هم همینطوره اینجا هم حالا نه تا نو ولی مثلا همین درچه حدودا ساعت یک و نیم به بعد دیگه بسته میشه و من تا آخرین فرصتی که داشتم رو در واقع اکسیم کرد So the parks in it's quite the same because the parks there are closing at 1:30 max mm. and she's been using her time just to get as many photos as he, she can before the closing time. ولی خب در کل چیز خیلی غیر معمولی نیست که پارک تا اواخر شب بازه چون ما ایرانی ها عادت شب نشینی خیلی تومون زیاده و این شب نشینی not an unusual thing to close at late midnight because um, this is a habit of people in Iran to stay up late and go outside and have picnics. Mm, I see. Okay. Um, so, uh, you have like, finished your presentation or you have like another project that you that you want to present? No, actually, the portfolio is finished, but we can see the most of the So, the, the uh, pictures of the portfolio is finished? Uh, as a photographer, like. How, how is the like coronavirus outbreak affecting your 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 life and your your project? اتفاقاً همون طور که کرونا روی زندگی هممون و این قرنطینه روی زندگی هممون تاثیر گذاشته، روی زندگی ما هم تاثیر گذاشته 
ولی خب اتفاقی که افتاد این بود که من سر کردم توی این دوران قرنطینه هم عکاسی بکنم و عکاسی رو کنار نذاشتم ادامه دادم و خیلی اتفاقا برای فرصت خوبی شد که بتونم هر روز عکاسی بکنم یعنی من خیلی اصلا آدم نبودم که بتونم هر روز دور بدم رو دست بگیرم و عکاسی بکنم نه ولی کرونا و این قرنطینه باعث شد که این کار رو انجام بدم و اتفاقا عکس آوردم از عکسایی که توی این دوران کار کردم عکس آوردم Um, taking photos and uh, she actually started taking photos every day which uh, she weren't able to do so before the uh, conditions before the corona uh, stuff the virus and um, she actually brought some photos of the uh, recent ones that she took. okay is there anything that you want to say about mm, like photography work in iran and how the photograph developments under uh, this regime personally um, um, family do you have them um no comment is saying that they have given me again that the nazar stamud akasi kolan to in regime kardan اینقدر راحت نمیشه این من فقط هم از منظر خودم حرف بزنم در مورد این قضیه همونطور که گفتم عکاسی در این مملکت برای من فعل سختی نبوده شده که گاهی در خیابون دوربینم رو بگیرن و بگن که بر چه عکاسی میکنی ولی فکر نمی چیزی باشه که مختص ایران باشه همه جای دنیا ممکن یه سری جاهای وجود دارن که شما نباید ازشون عکاسی بکنین و اگه عکاسی بکنین یک تابانی رو باید پس بدین خیلی جاها شما اگه تو خیابون راه برین و از صورت آدم ها عکاسی بکنین ممکن آدم ها شکی بشن یعنی فکر نمیکنم یک, قب... یک حس بینون بلدی این واکنش نسبت به عکاس و من واقعا با عنوان یک عکاس توی ایران هیچ وقت با مشکل خیلی جدی مواجه نشدم مگر اینکه بخوایم یعنی توی ژانر من حتی اقل هیچ وقت این طور نبوده چرا اگه من عکاس نود بودم مثلا ممکن بود که دوچار مشکل بشم برای نمایش عکس هم کما اینکه همونها رو, همونها رو هم خیلی ها در قالب فوتوبوک ارائه میدن و حتی به فروش میرسه من واقعا هیچ وقت مشکل جدی نبیشم کدوم کدوم چه عکس هایی عکس های نود یعنی آه نود اوکی um so she says you the your question is quite general and i do not have any um um specific idea about it because um this is a general reaction of society toward the photographer um in almost any other country that you go outside in the public and start taking photos of the people um there are some people who might get angry because of pointing it a lens at them and taking photo they might get suspicious um you might um they might start questioning you um and uh specific to her she hasn't had any huge problem although there's been times that um they've taken their her camera for her for taking photos um but um other than that there hasn't been any um issues um and also she mentioned about um there are some um nudity photographers who, who take nude photos and uh, publish them she says they um you might face some problems if you're in that category in iran but still there are some people who who are allowed to publish them as a photo book and sell them and um yeah that's all she said i guess okay ولی این به معنی نقض یعنی نمیتونم بگم که هیچ مشکلی وجود نداره چرا خیلی ها هستن که باز تکرار میکنم فارغ از جنسیتشون و صرفا شاید به خاطر انتخاب موضوعی که داشتن با حکومت تو چرا مشکل شدن یعنی دستگیر شدن و احتمالاً زمانی زمانی رو در زندان گذروندن ولی 
ف... یعنی فکر نمی کنم یعنی بر من هیچ وقت روغم مشکل پیش نمیده Sure, talking from her standpoint um, and her experiences specifically and not from others and there has been some cases that people had problems with the government and they got arrested um, but um, from her experience she hasn't had any huge issue with um, photography so do you have like, anything want to say before we uh, close our discussion today نه خیلی خوشحال شدم واقعا تجربه خیلی دلشی رو جذابی بود برام مرسی از حسن و حسین که این فرصت رو برام برام مقام آوردن عکسایی که توی دوره قرنطینه گرفتم رو میتونم حالا بعدا برای کرم بفرستم که ببینه اگر ما خیلی مرسی واقعا ممنون ازت برای ترجمه نه اشکال نداره She says, it's been a wonderful experience. Thank you so much for letting me have you guys and have this experience. Um, I can send you my photos that I took during this um, quarantine time uh, after we finished. Um, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Success for your uh, projects. And hopefully we can meet face to face like one day <laughs> in Iran or in Indonesia. Inshallah. <laughs>